Well, all this traveling around the state has made me thirsty. So why don't we head to the part of the state best known for its pure spring water? It's Abita Springs. This town in the middle of St. Tammany Parish gushes with many stories and myths pertaining to the deep artesian well underneath. A lion head fountain in the middle of a park is a cornerstone to the history of Abita Springs. From this fountain springs the tale of this historic site. And former mayor Brian Gowan helps us out. Brian, what's in a name? How did Abita Springs get its name? Well, there's a couple of stories. Uh -huh. Historically, since you know I'm a student of history, I gotta give you the straight story. Absolutely. Uh, Abita Springs, uh, actually the word Abita itself, is derived from a Choctaw Indian term. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure what the Choctaw word was. I've seen several different spellings, maybe Apitap. Not Abita, though. Uh -huh. Abita is derivative. And um, they believe that the term is a Choctaw term for the source of a stream. The Abita River begins just a few yards away from here, but the source of this spring lies deep underground. Now, the water coming out of this fountain is from our municipal water supply. And you say, oh, gee, what's the big deal? Well, <laughs> the big deal is our municipal water supply comes from a 2,000-foot deep artesian well that supplies pure water, untreated, unfiltered, unchemicalized, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and just comes right out here, this beautiful, clean water. Now, Brian is also a source to another story on the origin of the town's name. When centuries ago, an Indian princess named Abita fell deathly ill and came to the springs. She told her husband, a Spanish explorer named Enriquez, to leave her there and to come back in one month. When he finally returned, he figured he would either find her remains or her burial spot or he would have to add, you know, he just assumed that she would be dead. What did he find? Well, when he came, he looked and he saw nothing. And he looked around and all of a sudden this figure came running out of the woods and lo and behold, it was her in perfect health and radiant beauty, <laughs> like she was. Uh, that's a bunch of who we is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful story. It's a legend. That may more likely be the sales pitch during the early 1900s to sell the spring water to the masses. But a Beta Springs native, Arnold Strain, can vouch for the water's quality. It had a different taste than any spring water that I ever knew about. And it got an award in 1904 as the best water in, in the country. Really? At the uh, St. Louis Exposition. I don't mean to be rude, but may I ask you how old are you? I'm 89. You're 89 years old? Yeah, I was born in 1916. Is there something in the water? Because you look pretty young. Something about the Abita Springs water might be something it good. Might, about it might have had a play in it. It might have. And people used to go to the springs and get, uh, they'd get water. And a lot of people said that it really helped them. They'd come over from New Orleans. Doctors in New Orleans would tell people to come to Abita Springs and drink the spring water. It would help their kidneys. Many people said that it did. The pristine water and clean air drew thousands of New Orleans residents every summer, making Abita Springs a bustling resort community during the turn of the century. At one time, we had as many as 500 hotel rooms right in this little town. Doctors would even prescribe for people to come to Abita Springs to be cured of illnesses, especially respiratory diseases like tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. And uh, they believed that the air had a quality that they referred to as ozone, uh, and they called this the ozone belt. Here, the healing and destructive powers of water meet head on. Over 100 years ago, the spring was housed inside this pavilion. The gazebo was built for the original World's Fair in Audubon Park in 1884. Early Abita Springs developers moved it from New Orleans to its current location. The gazebo and park, however, was hit significantly by Hurricane Katrina and is under repair. 
In Abita Springs, it's all about the water. And over the years, it has created and spawned a few successful businesses aimed at quenching your thirst, including the Abita Springs Water Company and the Abita Brewery. This is the real quiet area of the brewery, right? Well, it is, actually. <laughs> Dave Blossman is the president of the Abita Brewery. The company produces about 2,500 cases of beer a day. We uh, grew from the tiny little spot in Abita Springs, which is now the Abita Brew Co. Uh, into what we are today, which is, uh, yeah, it's still a small company, but uh, definitely has some national notoriety to it. Abita Brewery employs about 34 people, and the plant also produces a root beer made with Louisiana cane sugar. And whether it's root beer or ale, the secret ingredient is the water. All water is that. And we're anomaly in the brewing industry that all water comes straight out of the source or to our deep artesian wells into the process without any alterations. And it's really uh, an amazing thing. It's like, you know, God intended us to make great beer with this great water, and it wouldn't be the same if it wasn't this water. One time I was in Chicago, and I ordered a, ordered a beat of beer, and I told the waitress, I said, I'm from the town where they make it. And she says, where's that? I said, a beat of Springs, Louisiana. She said, do you drink it? I said, drink it all the time. And, and they uh, had it? They had it, so it's spread out around the country. What goes better with a cool beverage than some good music? And the Abita Springs Town Hall is home to some of the finest in old time country music with regularly scheduled Opry concerts. I'm Pat Floyd, you know, we're the Evening Star String Band from Abita Springs, Louisiana. the Bible through and through, but he went down in deep ellum, now his preaching days are through. Oh, sweet mama, daddy's got the deep ellum blue. Looking back to see if you were looking back to see. As Abita Springs enters its second century in a post-Katrina world, it is likely the population will expand again taking on those looking for refuge, like so many that came before them. When I was young, I had a lot of help. I could get around, didn't need no help. Now I'm old and turning gray. The girls all look at me and say, too old, too old. He's too old to cut the mustard anymore. He's a getting too old. He's done got too Abita Springs is also a hub of activity for cyclists with the Tammany Trace. It's a 31 mile long bike path that extends to Slidell and if you ever get a chance take a trip on the Trace followed with a stop back at the Abita Brew Pub. Well that will do it for this edition of Lost Louisiana. What's in a name? Part 2. Just from that one question, it is amazing what Louisiana stories you can uncover. And for any other questions, make sure you bring them right here to the new State Museum in Baton Rouge, located just across the street from the State Capitol. I'm Charlie Winham. Thanks for joining us, and I hope to see you again for another edition of Lost Louisiana. Goodness, the Coca J Shrimp Boat. That is a beautiful, beautiful boat. I wonder where it got its name.